So I teased that I would be making a new tutorial series, but I didn't say what that would be. So drum roll, it's open shading language. The reason I'm doing open shading language is because nobody's really made tutorials about this. And if you're like, what the fuck is open shading language? That's the point. Most people don't even know it's a feature in Blender. And what it is, is it lets you program shaders. So instead of making notes, you can literally type code. Now, if you've never coded before, don't worry. This is an introductory series. I'm going to assume you don't know how to code or how OSL works or anything. So uh, first of all, let's get open shading language working. So I'm going to go to the shading workspace because this is where we're doing our shading. And I like to do our shading on a plane just so we can see what's going on very easily instead of a cube. And I'm going to apply a material. To get open shading language to work, there's a very important thing you have to do. You have to go into cycles. If you're not in cycles, there is no open shading language. And you have to enable this checkbox that says open shading language. Now, up until recently, you had to keep it on CPU. But uh, open shading language has been like CUDA enabled or something, which means that it's GPU compatible. And in uh, Blender 3.5 and onwards, you can actually go to GPU compute, and this checkbox will still be enabled. Okay, so CPU or GPU in cycles and enable this. Now, how do we actually access our open shading language? Well, we have all these nodes, and you might have noticed there's something called a script node, which I've never talked about. And it doesn't have any inputs or outputs, but it has a section for an internal script or an external script. The way you want to think about this is we are going to program, we're going to make a file that has a bunch of code in it. We're going to import it in here, and that will create a custom node. Now, you could do this externally. And what that means is you can open up something like Notepad, and you can write your code in here, and then load that in from here. Or we could do it internally in Blender, which is what I'm going to be doing. So uh, we need a text file. So we're going to go to the text editor and create a new text file. And you can see now we actually have this as an option. So in the script node, I'm loading in this text file. The code that we write in here is gonna affect this node. So if I write some nonsense like ABCD and click refresh, you're gonna see there's errors. And to actually see what those errors are, you can go to system console and it's gonna say syntax error, no structure name ABCD. Basically I wrote nonsense, okay? So we need to know how to write code. We're gonna start with a very simple program. So, uh, assuming you've never coded, here's what you need to start off with. We're gonna type in shader, we're making a shader, and then give it a name. It could be apple, it could be name, it could be anything. I'll do name just so it shows that it's general. So I'm making a shader, it's called name, and then I'm gonna make parentheses and brackets. Now what are these? I have a shader called name, Inside the parentheses, I'm gonna put the parameters. So in other words, are there inputs? Are there outputs? And inside the brackets, I'm gonna put the code. So if that didn't make sense to you, don't worry, I'll explain it. So I'm gonna hit enter a couple times. Don't worry, this is still the same. When it reads the code, it's as if I didn't hit enter, it doesn't matter. So everything in here is inside the parentheses and everything in here is inside the brackets. And if I now run this script, you can see it does say OSL shader uh, compilation succeeded. Now, it doesn't look any different because we didn't really put any special code in here. We just made a shader called name. So let's give this thing an input. If you've never coded before, uh, you probably don't know the word float. It's basically code talk for number. So whenever I write float, I want you to think number. So again, we're putting a parameter inside these parentheses. It's gonna be a number called anything, A, B, Apple, whatever. So I'm making a number called A, and I'm going to initialize it. I'm going to say that, to start with, it's equal to zero. And let's refresh this. And you can see now our script node has an input. So we're creating a node here. It's called A, and it has a default value of zero. If I switch this number to one, well, it seems like it hasn't updated. But you need to initialize it, is the point. And now you can actually slide this and do stuff with it. Now, this is kind of useless because it doesn't output anything. So what I can say is, so this is kind of the most basic node. I could say output. So first we initialized a uh, number. So I'm saying make a number. It's called A. It's equal to zero. And now output. So this is the basically sockets on the right side of the node that output. I'm going to output a float. 
So again, I'm outputting a number called b, make sure it's a different name, and I'm initializing it equal to zero. Only thing with syntax here is if you have a bunch of things, separate them by commas. So if I refresh this, now you can see there's an output called b, and if I connect this, uh, you can see it's black. Oh, and make sure you're in the rendered uh, tab, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, you can see it's black because I initialized it to zero. If I initialize it to one and refresh, now it's white. If I do 0.5, it's going to be kind of gray. Okay, so we're initializing it. So uh, this a slider doesn't really do anything. Uh, what I want to do is I want to say whatever the a slider is, output it. So in other words, a is equal to b. Again, what I'm saying is I'm outputting b, and I want it so that whatever a is, whatever we custom put in here, that's equal to b. In other words, now we're coding inside these uh, brackets. So these are our initial parameters. I said make an input, make an output, and inside our brackets, what I'm going to say is B, our output, is equal to A. The way uh, you want to read this is I'm not, I'm not saying B is equal to A and A is equal to B. It doesn't go both ways. In coding, when you say equals to, it's assigning A to B. So I'm overwriting what B is. Initially it was zero, and now I'm saying it's equal to A. A has not changed. They're not equal to each other. I'm assigning it. So A is equal to B. And uh, just like in here, you separate by commas. Inside the code, you separate by semicolons. If you've done C++ or anything like this, that will be familiar. So now I'm going to refresh it, and you're going to see nothing's changed. But in theory, if I've assigned A to the value B, if I change this, you can now see this is dynamic. Okay, so whatever I input in here will be outputted. In fact, because this is a node, we can literally connect the value node and control it this way. Now, if you think about it, what we've essentially made is a very fancy, with code, value node, right? You input something, and it outputs that value, which is exactly uh, what we've done here. So that is your first piece of code. Again, we have a shader. It's called name. It could have been called anything. For its initializing parameters, I said make a float. That's a number called A. That's initially 0. And also make an output. That's a number called B. That's initially equal to 0. But uh, in the code, we're assigning A to B, so we get this. Now, again, if you're in Eevee, this isn't going to work. If you don't enable open shading language, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure that's enabled and make sure you're in rendered mode. So uh, there you go. That is the initial uh, OSL tutorial open shading language. I think tomorrow I'm going to come out with another video where we get a bit more complicated and we're going to build on the code and I'm going to explain the concepts. So. Thank you for watching, um, and as always, I just want to end this tutorial by saying uh, there is a Patreon link in the description. Why should you care? Because the patrons, all 600, some of you, are financially funding this channel, uh, CG Matter and Default Cube. Uh, without that, there are no tutorials, so I'm very grateful. Um, if you want to support what I do, uh, you can go to Patreon, or if you want actual blend files, early access to tutorials, exclusive tutorials, uh, that's also available on Patreon. So you get something in return, or you can think of it as a donation, whatever you want. So uh, thank you to the patrons. They let me make tutorials like this about an obscure thing like open shading language that nobody cares about. But it's actually very powerful because it lets you do things that you can't do with nodes. Um, but that's it. Hopefully some people I've converted to the Patreon realm. We'll see. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.